creator uh, and lead developer of Other Space. Uh, I'm also the writer designer on Knee Deep by Prologue Games. Uh, and this uh, is the second episode of our Other Space audio logs. Uh, this is going to be two Vox enter, one Vox leaves. Uh, and before uh, we get into this uh, reenactment, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Other Space, uh, what we are, what we do, uh, and how you can get involved. All right, so Other Space is a text-based role-playing game. It's been running online for nearly 19 years. Um, we got our start uh, as a MUD, uh, mush, uh, subset of the MUD. Uh, and these are games where you connected by Telnet uh, and you could uh, have characters that move from room to room. These were games that served as precursors uh, to projects like World of Warcraft. Uh, and when World of Warcraft came along, uh, a lot of text-based games that uh, had quests and storytelling and everything else uh, in them sort of fell by the wayside. Um, uh, Other Space is still online as a Telnet mush. Uh, you can reach it at jointhesaga.com 1790, uh, where it has been for many years. Uh, but uh, these days, we're shifting more toward using Slack as our platform and the best way to join there and it's free to do so is to use slackpass.io slash join the saga uh, that lets you sign up and subscribe uh, and uh, when you join uh, every world that exists as a role-playing area uh, is now a channel uh, on our Slack site. Um, so as scenes take place, you're going to be posing characters uh, in these scenes uh, within those planets. And as the scenes move to different locations, you change channels, basically. Um, so RP is still the big focus, role playing and bringing these characters to life in an evolving space opera. Uh, everything takes place at this point in the year 2650. Uh, it's all after the Hivers uh, have been proven uh, to be uh, sneaky little devils that were giving us other space technology to kidnap our people and use them to fight wars uh, against their adversaries uh, in a parallel universe. Um, so what, what has happened at this point is that uh, the player characters from the original first story arc of Other Space, their stuff has happened. They've defeated the Hivers, uh, and now everybody's using a faster than light drive that was brought out of the mothballs called the Tillsworth Cook Faster Than Light Drive. Uh, and the Hivers are no longer an issue. Uh, and now uh, it's uh, a time of peace. Uh, at the moment, but the parallax uh, is a difficult situation waiting to happen. The fringe, uh, the pirates and the thieves of the fringe are up to no good, and the consortium is being run by uh, a president uh, who's a bit extremist. Um, but anyway, that's where we're at. It's, it's free to play, uh, free to get involved. We have a Patreon uh, that you're welcome to contribute to. That helps us cover the server costs. Uh, I spend about $250 a year uh, for hosting and other things. And now uh, with the end of the month coming up, we're going to be rewarding players uh, who help promote the game on social media. Uh, and get the word out, try to bring in new blood. Uh, I've also spent 50 bucks on a Reddit advertising campaign to try to bring in people that way. Uh, I've been promoting us at RPGFix.com. So I'm trying to do my part to, to bring more people in. I think the Slack site is a really good move for us. Uh, we've had more activity uh, and more new faces showing up since we went to the web-based uh, Slack system than we've had on the mush in months. Um, and also the fact that there's a Slack app you can put on your smartphone that is also free. Uh, and it means you could be anywhere, anytime, and you could communicate with us on the on the uh, Slack site. Uh, 
Uh, and besides role playing, we have uh, little chat areas for talking about books, movies, TV shows, and even parenting. Uh, because you know, I'm in my going into my fourth year uh, uh, or fifth year coming up of being a parent. Uh, John Michael's about to turn four, so uh, quite the adventure. And uh, if you want to share uh, your own stories, if you're a parent, feel free to join up, and we'll chat. Uh, I also have places there to talk about the development of knee deep uh, and of other spaces that's going on um, so uh, that's a, a bit about the mush what we are what we do and how you can get involved if you ever have any questions about the game feel free to send me an email at join the saga at gmail.com I mentioned Patreon earlier. Uh, I want to say thanks uh, to El Windus and Newt, uh, who continue to be uh, our raconteur level sponsors on Patreon. Uh, it's really appreciated. Uh, this, like I said, their contributions help pay for uh, Amazon.com gift certificates. They help pay for our server costs, uh, any advertising expenses, uh, as I try to ramp things up. So every little bit helps. Uh, and again. Thank them so much. Uh, and I'm going to be trying to work on some more ideas uh, for Patreon rewards uh, for the different tiers, uh, just to try to add some incentives there, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so a couple of notes uh, about two Vox Enter, one Vox Leaves. Uh, this event takes place after the colony ship Sanctuary uh, has returned to the region known as Normal Space, or the Orion Arm of the Milky Way Galaxy, uh, in the year 3000. Uh, they had fled uh, in the 2650s to get away from the Kryptonian invasion uh, and flipped over into this alternate universe. Uh, and traveled for six of their months, and when they came back, a lot of time had passed. Uh, and during that time, there'd been uh, kind of a resurgence uh, of the Null and the Parallax. Um, and the Null uh, end up taking over uh, Sanctuary. Sanctuary's name changes to Concordance Station. Uh, Oswald Coddington uh, is leading it uh, for a certain amount of time. And then, if I recall correctly, Coddington was murdered uh, by a Volistan light singer uh, who uh, was named Volari. Uh, and the Null ended up taking over uh, the station, uh, which was located near Nocturne, which was this Khmer home world, which was, you know, full of super powerful, magical uh, kind of stuff. Um, and at some point during this period, uh, the Vox, who's the leader of the Null in the Parallax, the little reptiloid uh, warrior people, the good Vox, the sane Vox, uh, the Vox who could get along well with others, um, was driven off into exile. And uh, the other Vox that took over, Ockvril, uh, was more like your usual strongman dictator type. Uh, and at a certain point in the storyline, uh, we ended up having a showdown between the two characters. Uh, and I believe I played Ockvril, um, and uh, that was my character for the story. Um, and one of the things I really enjoy about this log, and be warned uh, if things like violence and gore offend you in text, uh, which I think would be pretty silly, but just a fair warning, there's a lot of it uh, in this story. The Null are a uh, honorable but violent bunch of people. Uh, they were kind of my short Klingons uh, in other space. Um, they have kind of this Napoleon complex. They feel like they're underestimated uh, to their enemy's peril. Uh, but uh, there have been other uh, stories and scenes at, on other space where this has been showcased, but I thought this one was really uh, kind of driving the point home. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to work uh, on doing my best uh, null impersonations for two Vox Enter, one Vox Leaves. This high, broad chamber serves as the flight prep and launch deck for the Concordance Station colony ship. A blister module high atop the port wall above the entrance serves as the control tower. To starboard, a wide slit opens onto the blackness of space. The cargo bay is aft. 
From the cargo bay emerges the exile Vox, Ulka of Hatch Cathar, followed by an entourage of Cathar loyalist Nall. They all look fairly lean and ragged from months within the superstructure of the colony vessel. The exile Vox is wearing her armor, ceremonial swords slung at her side, the talons of her feet clack on the deck plates. Zarkavir follows the current legitimate Vox, the one he supports and serves faithfully. His talon of warriors is in a spherical formation around Ockville, while two guards in black armor, gleaming with engravings, stand even closer to the Vox than the other warriors. Zarkavir himself stands behind the Vox in his own black armor, claws resting at his sides. Each of his eyes travel in separate directions, surveying the different sides of the opposing party. Ockvril walks forward, sheltered by the circle of guards. He is wearing his own armor, a filigreed affair depicting the various victories and trials of the Vril clan. A ceremonial sword is belted to the side of the armor, and one claw drifts near it as he catches sight of Olka and her entourage. Olka closes the distance across the flight deck, finally stopping within a few feet of Ock of Hatch Vril. Her followers, a meager showing compared to the assembly around Ockville, also stop, stand and watch, their tails lashing back and forth. The exile Vox lowers her snout, staring at Ockville. We end this now, under the watchful gaze of Nalia, to see which of us she truly has blessed. These with me will swear fealty to you, should you prove victorious. Tell those with you to swear their fealty to me, should I prevail. Or you may yield without combat, and I will take only your tail as a trophy of this day. Akvril continues to hold his snout high, eyes swiveling to focus on the deposed Vox. He makes a quick motion with his claws, and the two front guards step to the side, facing the other Nall. I say now, before Nalia, that if I should fall to my opponent, you will serve her in my stead. There will be no cowardice today, Oka, unless it is your own. Yield now, and we will make your execution a glorious sacrifice to Naya herself. Olka shifts her snout in negation. I do not yield, but let us set aside our blades and armor, and fight with tooth and claw as Nalia intended. Zarkavir stands perfectly straight while the conversation goes back and forth, from the challenger to the challenged. His eyes revert to a position that stares in front of him, and his tail remains still, as does the rest of his body. Akvril bobs his snout and hisses back, "'The condemned can be afforded a last wish. We will settle this with fang and claw in the way of our ancestors.' Olka drops her jaw open in amusement, then turns to her comrades for assistance in removing the armor and relieving her of the sword. Now ye shine on you, my brave ones. Akvril raises his short arms to his sides as his honor guard goes about the task of removing his armor, his eyes swivel in their sockets, staying locked on Ulka. The warriors surrounding Akvril gradually part, eventually creating two lines next to him. Zarkavir somehow is left at the front of one of the lines, while another Huth is at the front of the other. As always, he is statue-like. The warriors behind Ulka Cathar form a reverse vanguard, pointing toward the customs facility. They watch in silence as the exile Vox raises a tattooed palm in salute to Akvril, and then her darkly gleaming claws slash the air with a sinuous movement. Her tail lashes back and forth. Slowly she begins to circle, measuring the readiness of her opponent. Akvril steps forward, returning the raised palm to Ulka. His own guards close ranks, forming the opposite of the Cathar loyalists. He stalks toward her, his own claws held at the ready, tail lightly twitching as his beady eyes focus on the other Nall. 
head bobbing rhythmically, glassy eyes catching the glow of the overhead lights. Ulka Cathar bides her time as she moves in that slow circle, watching, waiting, and then, when Okvril moves close, the exile Vox hisses furiously and lashes out with three talons, shrieking toward Okvril's throat. Okvril recoils as Ulka's claws tear into the side of his throat. Twin trails of Ikor follow, some of it splattering on the floor. He lets out a long hiss, then leaps toward the other gnaw, claws flashing uh, toward her throat to return the favor. The exile Vox throws up a pebble-fleshed arm to block the downward slash of Okvril's thrashing talons, and then kicks with a digging trio of claws toward her opponent's belly. Zarkavir watches silently as his, his leader engages in the fight, only one eye following it while the other stares at the other soldiers. The tip of his tail sways slightly. In a fluid movement, Okvril skips to the side as Ulka's claws dart in. He helps her forward with a quick slap of his tail on her hindquarters, throwing her off balance. His jaws open, yellowed fangs bared for all to see. His neck snapping down like a snake, he aims for the back of her neck. Okvril's jaws clamp on the back of Ulka Cathar's neck briefly, but she wriggles free, brings her foot back down, and steps back, tail lashing as she clears a gap between herself and her opponent, preparing to circle again. Okvril lunges at Ulka quickly, trying to capitalize on his advantage. His claws dart toward her throat. He lets out a long, raspy hiss as he strikes. Dark eyes reflecting twinned visions of the oncoming attacker, Ulka Cathar deftly sidesteps, letting Okvril stagger beside her before the exile Vox lunges, jaws wide, trying to snap down on Okvril's exposed throat. Okvril moves, but too slow. Ulka clamps her jaws around the back of his neck, Ikor squirting wildly in the air. A loud hiss emits from Okvril, but it is cut off quickly. He thrashes about, trying to batter the other gnaw with his tail. The wounds on his neck open further as he attempts to dislodge her jaws. Zarkavir watches silently as his vox is butchered, almost liter literally, by the exile. He is obviously helpless to do anything given the honor code he follows. His tail has stopped it swooshing, and both of his eyes are glued to the fight. Ulka keeps her jaws tightly locked on Okvril's throat and lets the usurper's own movements cause further damage to himself. She then tries to bump him over onto his side, using her chest, hoping to pin him down. Okvril seems like a rag doll in Ulka's jaws. He flops to the ground without protest. The wet slap of pebbled flesh accompanies his fall as blood spreads over the floor from his wounds. Still clamped onto Okvril's throat, the exile Vox falls with him, crouching above his inert and bleeding form. Her tail lashes back and forth as one dark eye regards his snout, and the other rolls back enough to gaze briefly at Okvril's unmoving tail, anticipating a ploy. Finally, however, the exile releases her death grip on the usurper's ravaged throat and confirms he is immobile. She stares down at him, hissing softly, and then speaks, Naya shine on you, glorious child. And then she drops, jaws wide and snapping around Okvril's neck to finish the bloody work. She thrashes her snout back and forth, rending the pebbled flesh and the cords of muscle, finally tearing open Okvril's windpipe with a ghastly hiss. Her snout wet with his lifeblood, she rises from his corpse, resting a clawed foot upon his chest. It is done, she growls. The usurper Okvril's escorts all lower their snouts deeply toward the new Vox and raise their claws, palms open, displaying the tattoos of their respective hatches. Zarkavir does the same, his tail becoming rigid and straight, neutral. The exile's followers lower their snouts in deference to the fallen usurper. Ulka Cathar slowly turns to regard the others and removes her clawed foot from the fallen warrior's corpse. Her talons scrape the deck plates. Convey his corpse to the medical facility. We will return him to the home soil in the coming days. I must go now to rest and consider what must be done in Nalia's name. Loyalty will be rewarded. Her eyes drift to the body of Okvril. Treason, of course, has its own rewards. 
Zarkavir, seemingly the leader of the group, besides the two honor guards, speaks up, snout still lowered respectfully. It will be so, honored Vox. Along with the other Huth, he heads toward the body to retrieve it. Olka lifts her snout and raises her tattooed palm in salute to Zarkavir, and then she walks off to be among those who have seen her through the ordeal within the infrastructure. Zarkavir's eyes shift toward Olka Kathir momentarily as she walks away, the other toward his current task, disposing of the body of his beloved ex-Vox. His gaze then fixates on the body. Zarkavir's tail begins to sway around gently again as he picks the body up, like there's a breeze on the flight deck. So that's it for our second audio log episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, look forward to doing the next one. Uh, remember, Other Space is still online, still going, uh, even though the uh, Two Vox Center, One Vox Leaves story took place more than a decade ago. It's been a long time. Um, we still have stories going, and I'm hoping in the near future uh, to actually do uh, some audio logs based on the material we're doing in Slack now. Um, I'm having a lot of fun uh, with Razorback, uh, Narai, Kolchak, um, and Catherine, uh, and other new players who are getting started. Um, I'm hoping they get up to speed and can really help contribute to the story going forward. It feels great uh, to see uh, people active and doing things. Uh, remember, you can join the Slack site. Uh, the easiest way is by going to slackpass.io slash join the saga. Uh, and subscribing that way. That automatically uh, connects you with our Slack. Uh, you then log in and just start doing your thing. Um, and uh, there's you know information on our website at www.jointhesaga.com. Uh, and we have the Patreon if you're feeling generous uh, to you know, contribute to our server costs and uh, money for prizes and advertising. Uh, always welcome. Uh, so thanks again for listening and take care.